Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a quick and easy tutorial on a live grainy Xerox effect in Photoshop. I'm gonna try and make this as short and sweet as possible, but before I start, make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. All right, let's get started. So obviously we're gonna start with our image that we want to have that Xerox effect on. I have a few sample images in here, but before we actually get to that, you wanna make sure that the document you're working on is in 300 dpi. This is very important. And you can check this by going to image, image size, and this dialog will tell you what your dpi is. So mine's at 300, I'm currently on a 16 inch by 20 inch 300 dpi document, which is what I use for all merch designs and whatnot. Use whatever width and height you'd like, but make sure the resolution is on 300. All right, cool. So I've got some sample images in here. I just wanna show you how this live effect works real quick. Here's what this image would look like with the Xerox effect applied to it. And here it is again with some tone adjustments to the image to just really sell that Xerox effect. And like I said, this is a live effect, so you can move the layer around, you can paint on it, do whatever, and it's all live and cohesive within the Xerox look. I'll also teach you how to get a larger Xerox grain, something like this. It's just a larger grain, really, which functions the exact same as the other Xerox. Here's another example. See, this is with the large grain and this is with the small grain. And of course, this is all still live, very modular effect. How can we do this? It's actually very simple. So let's just get right into it. So first, just have your image ready. And then right above that, we're gonna create a threshold adjustment layer. So go into your adjustments and go to threshold. And that does have the work for us. You can see if your photo is already grainy, you're kind of already getting that Xerox effect, but I'm gonna show you how to double that and make it all look cohesive. So next up, we're going to create a 50% gray layer. We want to make sure that gray layer is between the image layer and the threshold. So go ahead and just create a new layer and then do shift backspace on your keyboard. And this will bring up the fill command. And from here, you can choose the contents to be 50% gray. So just press OK. Once you have your gray layer, it's going to show up as white because of the threshold. Just leave that for now. We're going to go up to filter, camera raw filter, and we're going to add a noise to this by going to the effects panel and then cranking up the gray in all the way. You can mess with the size a little bit. I also prefer the roughness to be pretty maxed out, but yeah, so mess with the size and whatever on this. I personally just keep it in the mid ranges. It doesn't really matter that much. So I'm gonna press okay on this. And now all I have to do is set this layer to overlay. Boom, pretty fucking sick, pretty cool Xerox effect, but it gets better. You can also duplicate this noise layer with command J for a more pronounced effect. And you can do this as many times as you want to get it just as grainy as you want. And like I said, this is live. So if I wanted to do this on another image really quick, I would simply replace the image that's underneath these two threshold and grain layers. So now I have this image of a Kurt Cobain under here, which I want the same effect on. But you can see that this image is a little blown out and we're not really getting all the detail that can come through with the tones of this image. So I'm gonna show you a cool little adjustment trick that we could do to bring out more details in this. So just select your image layer, go up to image adjustments and choose shadows and highlights. And now you can just mess around with these values. If you wanna turn the highlights down, that's obviously going to compress the highlights. And if you turn these shadows up, the more you turn up the highlights, obviously the more the highlights are going to be compressed. And the more you turn up the shadows, the more these shadows will pop out. And this is really good for this certain Xerox effect because it kind of gives that sharpened halo effect between the shadows and the highlights, which is something you would see with real old scanners and Xerox machines. So this is looking real good. I'll press okay on this and boom, that's pretty much it. I'll give you one last quick tip. Let's say the grain on this is too harsh or too tiny. Something you could do is just blur this grain. So I'm gonna duplicate this grain layer and I'll hide the other one. And I'll go up to filter, blur, object blur. And I can blur this as much as I want to get a bigger grain on the image. I'm gonna go for around five. And since we kind of lost some detail in the process, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times until I get the amount of detail that I want. Cool, we're looking pretty good. Now I can go in the layer mask of this image and just paint wherever I want. And it's going to give me that grainy, Xeroxy fade on the layer mask as well, which is just an amazing workflow because it allows you to get these consistent effects across your whole design. All right, that's all I got for you for today. As always, thank you for watching. I really hope you learned something. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notifications bell so you're notified when I upload new tutorials just like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.